Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Today, if my memory serves me correctly, is the 10th episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. And in these last 10 episodes, I think we have actually set ourselves up really, really well in this Minecraft world. We have ourselves a wonderful house, a portal to the nether, a cow farm, a wheat farm, some sugarcane growing out there, the chickens down here feeding me eggs every now and again, and potion brewing, enchanting storage. It's all coming together so, so well. And the enchanting table is actually what I want to focus on for today's episode because as we covered in our previous episode on an introduction to enchanting, we don't really have the top level enchants that we could be getting out of this thing because we don't have any bookshelves surrounding it. Right now, we'll only be able to get enchantments that uh, act from up to level 1 to about level 10 or so. They still only cost 1, 2 or 3 levels, but you need 10 experience levels in order to get the top level enchants. Here, you need 30 to get the top level enchants that it is possible to get out of an enchantment table and that is really our goal for today because those level 30 enchantments are going to be so much more effective they're going to be the top level kind of enchants that you'll be able to get on your tools and armor and that is what we want to aim for today we want to use some of those diamonds that we acquired in the nether fortress and enchant some really top level gear and to do that we need to make a lot of bookshelves and to make bookshelves of course we need books now as we've learned in a previous episode you get books from sugarcane making three sugarcane into three paper and one leather which we'll be getting from those cows and we have a fair amount of leather already so we can definitely make a start with that the problem right now is the sugarcane this grows kind of slowly <laughs> right now and i've been harvesting it occasionally here and there replanting it where i can but the sugarcane farm is very small right now and it's going to take us a lot of waiting in order to get enough sugarcane to make the, the amount of books that we want. Even as I come back into the house here and look for the sugarcane that I put down earlier, we've only got four in there. That's not even enough to make two books yet. So <laughs> we do need to expand the sugarcane farm a little bit. There are a couple of places around here that we can actually go and get more sugarcane that we might be able to harvest manually out here in the world, although it's getting dark, so I don't want to stray too far away from the house. But there's a little patch of sugarcane just on the other side of this pond that I think we might try and grab before night falls. I did spot it earlier that I, th I thought I might as well go over and harvest some of that. So we've got the maximum amount of sugarcane that we can have to start off today's project. What I want to do is create a couple of different sugarcane farm designs and let you guys choose which one you would like because <laughs> there are a few different options when it comes to doing stuff in Minecraft. You can farm stuff manually, you can go for a, a kind of high yield manual farm or alternatively you can set up a little farm that might be a little smaller but can do stuff for you automatically so you're free to get on with whatever you want to do in the background. So we'll, we'll look into a couple of these designs today we'll actually end up building both of them and then we'll end up picking our favorites maybe in the comments you guys can decide which one you prefer and then we'll end up using that as our sugarcane farm for the series going forward. But before we do all that, I just noticed there's a bucket of lava still in my inventory, which I sort of want to get rid of. I don't want to be carrying that around just in case I accidentally place it somewhere and it burns down my house. So I'm going to put it here in the furnace where it will be safe because buckets of lava are actually a really useful fuel. Let's talk about fuel for a second, actually, because I feel like we haven't discovered the full extent of fuel in Minecraft with you guys. So let's let's take a quick look here. So. With wood, which is a very easy to acquire resource, you get it from the minute you start in the Minecraft world, the first thing you do is acquire wood. Wood will actually cook stuff pretty well. I mean, if you break it down into sticks, two sticks will cook one item in Minecraft. So it will smelt one piece of iron ore, it will cook one pork chop or piece of steak or whatever you want to make. But the problem there is that you want to be using the wood for other stuff. You need it for crafting and building and all sorts of other things. So you don't necessarily want to waste your wood on being fuel. To that end, you have coal. Coal is a very easily acquired and pretty useful source of fuel. One piece of coal will smelt up to eight blocks. So you can have, uh, you know, eight pork chops, eight pieces of iron, eight pieces of gold, whatever. It doesn't matter. It will just smelt it eight times. Lava can smelt things 100 times. A single bucket of lava, when placed in a furnace, will cook up to 100 items. And in fact, you can't even place 100 items in a furnace at the same time because stacks of items in Minecraft only go up to a maximum of 64. So you actually need to feed stuff into the furnace and take it out manually or use hoppers to feed it in and take it out in order to get the full efficiency 
out of your use of a bucket of lava. But even so, if you just want to throw a stack of stone in there and let it be, there's plenty of lava around. You saw the nether last episode. There's a lot of it. You, uh, you can just leave the lava in there and it will cook that right up for you. You will even get the bucket back. So that's, uh, that's a little lesson on lava. And you can also make coal blocks if you put eight, uh, nine coal rather into a square like so. It will, uh, it will make a block of coal. That will smelt 80 items, which is slightly more efficient than I think 72 you would get out of nine pieces of coal. So that's, that's actually uh, another way of making coal a little bit more efficient. But again, you might want to use coal for other stuff. You might need it for torches. You might even use blocks of coal as building blocks if you're feeling adventurous and you have a lot of them. Anyway, I'm going to put these eggs away now and let's get back to talking about sugarcane farms. And for that, actually, we might need a couple of buckets <laughs> other than the bucket of lava that we just placed in there. How about we grab a little bit of iron and let's make two buckets for a second. We should only need one, generally speaking, but we'll make two for the purposes of this demonstration. So I'm going to botch the recipe for making a bucket for a second. There we go. Let's grab two of those and let's head outside to the lake. So the lake right now has been a decent place to harvest this sugarcane from, but we want to expand our operation a little bit. And for that, we get to talk about how water behaves in Minecraft, because we're going to need to move some of this water somewhere else. Now, you'll notice that all of this water is looking very still. None of it is flowing around. And that is because this is all made of water source blocks. And a source block is something that you can take out a bucket of water. Oh, that disappeared kind of quickly, but it's there. Let's try that again. Whoop, there it is. Okay, and if you have source source blocks around a block where they can flow into that block, then they will reform another water source block. Let me give you a better example of that here by digging a three block deep or three block wide trench like so. Now, if I place a bucket of water at one end, this is still a source block, even though it's got this flowing texture, but the water will flow down here. In fact, it will flow for a maximum of eight blocks before it runs out of steam and ends up not uh, occupying that last block there. So you've got a, a full run of eight blocks, the water diminishes down to nothing, and nowhere along this flowing water can you fill up your bucket. You only have to fill it up at the water source at the end here. So this leads to a couple of quite interesting mechanics in Minecraft, so you can uh, you can exper experiment with those at your leisure. But the one we want to focus on today is creating an infinite water source. So if you put down a bucket on that end, then it's flowing that way. If you put down a bucket on this end, then you'd have a source block here and a source block here. And what it does is flow together in the middle and create a third source. Now, if I take this out, it will reform again and you'll be able to fill up your buckets from here. And this is probably the smallest infinite water source you can make just with these three blocks here. If you take out one of the uh, one of the pieces of water from the end, though, it ends up flowing again. And eventually you can just diminish your water source back down to nothing because you're taking it out from one end and it doesn't have another water source next to it to reform itself. There is another way you can make an infinite water source, which you might have seen other people do. And this is arguably better because with the water sources here, if you place them on opposite corners, like so, it will end up creating a two by two water source. And any, any place you take water out of from this section, so any of these four corners that you take the water out of, it will refill it because it always has two water sources on either side to fill it back up again. So this is actually a slightly more effective infinite water source just because you can take it from anywhere and it doesn't take up a huge amount more room than the three by one design over there. But having infinite water in Minecraft means that you don't have to empty out this entire lake if you want to create another lake somewhere else or if you want a lot of water for water streams that are carrying items around and stuff like that. You only need to create an infinite water source and then you can have as much water as you want. You could drown the whole world if you wanted to, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> so for today, we're going to be using this in order to create a kind of a kind of very efficient manual sugarcane farm. And we're also going to use it to create the automatic sugarcane farm in a little bit, but we will need less of the water and more technology for that one. This one is going to be purely made by hand with a shovel uh, and, and with a, an infinite water source, and we'll just pop down the sugarcane around these sources. So this is the way I like to do it, because this way actually becomes very space efficient, even though it doesn't look this way at first. So you can place sugarcane next to a water block, on any of the four sides of that block, right? So it stands to reason that you should also be able to place sugarcane kind of adjacent to these sugar canes here if you have another water source block there. So we can fill it up like that. And if we just keep going with this pattern, all we need to do is go two across and one down, dig another hole here, place another bucket of water in there, 
and you fill up all of the space around it. And now by following this same pattern, we can actually stagger all of the sugarcane and make this kind of pinwheel pattern where you have a, a basically a field's worth of sugarcane with no blocks gone to waste. So again, we'll go over two and down one. We'll put another water source here and we'll be able to start filling it up there. I hope I've explained that all right. I hope that makes some sense to you. But realistically, you can basically build a sugarcane farm however you want. You can have it in long rows. You can have it around a lake like this as long as the blocks you're placing them on are dirt, grass, or sand. You should be able to plant the sugarcane any way you like. But if you want to grow a huge amount of it in the smallest area possible, this is a decent start. You can just follow this pattern around here and you'll be able to place sugarcane anywhere outside of the water source blocks themselves. And you can even take some trapdoors, which I've got in my inventory handily, and put them over the top of the water source blocks just by looking at the bottom of these sugarcane there. So don't place them inside here because you will just end up having the trapdoor in there with the water. Although, I don't know, in 1.13, can you do that now? Oh, you can, wonderful. <laughs> I didn't realize that was an option. So yeah, you can in fact have the trapdoors now level with the water blocks thanks to the water logging <laughs> that takes place in Minecraft 1.13, but in earlier versions, you might want to uh, place the trapdoors just above the water level by looking at the side of the sugarcane like that. So that makes our job a little bit easier. And in fact, you could probably use some other waterlogged blocks for this, like waterlogged stairs or slabs or something like that in order to grow the sugarcane around here. Now, of course, this doesn't make the sugarcane grow any faster. In fact, when you start off with a small amount of sugarcane, it's actually going to feel really, really slow. So you might want to go and do something else while your sugarcane grows, but each time it grows up to a block higher, you can take that off and the remaining sugarcane will stay planted, which means you can come back and harvest it anytime it grows and just keep adding to this until you've got a lot of it. Because obviously, once you have a lot, you're gonna be able to get a lot more when it all grows up. So now what I'm gonna do is spend a little bit of time waiting for this to grow, maybe looking a little way around the local area to see if I can spot any more sugarcane we can bring back here and add to this farm. And then we'll see how long it takes to grow and how much we get when we harvest it all. You'll sometimes find sugarcane growing along the edges of rivers, so it's sometimes a good idea to check out nearby rivers if you have them. Let's see if there's anything down here other than a couple of interesting looking caves and a water source block that's kind of hanging in midair. Let's uh, let's give that a block update, shall we? There we go. <laughs> that's, that's now flowing as it should. What a strange thing. Anyway, let's hop over here and see if there's any sugarcane growing further down here. We're getting a little bit of seagrass and so forth, but it doesn't look like there's much down this little valley. This is leading up into the extreme hills, so not a huge chance of finding anything like that around here, but you never know. All right, let's head over to the swamp and see if we can find anything over there. Here we go. As we're heading out into the swamp, I think we will find a couple more patches of sugarcane around here. Let's take the top off of this one so that it will always grow back here, but we'll grab two sugarcane from that. Let's see what else is out here. Let's get up to a higher vantage point and see if we can spot any. Oh, looks like there's loads growing over there. <laughs> so let's grab some of that. Let's grab this one as we go past. I'm, I'm being uh, faked out a little bit here by all of the, uh, the seagrass that's growing up over here. But you know what? We'll take a quick swim through the river. I keep looking at this and thinking it might be sugarcane in the distance and it's actually seagrass up close. <laughs> so let's, let's grab some of this. Luckily, when the world actually generates, it sometimes generates sugarcane when it's already three blocks high so you don't have to wait for it to grow and this looks like the perfect place to grab a little bit more there's even some over there as well let's go get it and you might be wondering why i'm not just turning all of this into paper as i gather it and the main reason is that we might need books in future we might need to make more bookshelves for decoration purposes you can actually enchant books with different enchantments instead of straight up enchanting your tools so it's actually useful to have a farm for it as well while i'm here I might actually grab some of these pumpkins, which seem to be growing naturally in a swamp because I don't think we've had pumpkins before. I've noticed some of them growing up on the hill near our little base, but I do want to grab a couple of pumpkins while I'm out here in the swamp. And the swamp feels like a nice place to get them, doesn't it? Another thing I might grab while I'm here at the swamp is these lovely blue orchid flowers, which can be used to make a light blue dye, but also look really great as decorative flowers. So let me grab those. And then I think we've got as much sugarcane as we're going to get from around this area. So let's head back to the base and add it to the farm. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> There's a bunch of it over here. And this one, 
has even grown to four blocks tall, which never happens when you plant sugarcane, but occasionally in the world they will generate like that. So that's kind of special. We're going to cut it down anyway, because I want sugarcane at this point. And remember when you're going on a trip like this, it's important to keep track of where you are, keep track of your surroundings, and at the very least, make sure you have the coordinates of your base on you, or a map that will guide you back home. You can even make a compass that will take you back to your spawn point, and if we've started our little cottage over here near the spawn point, it will always point in that direction. Now, th these floating sections of the uh, mountains here are actually a really good uh, landmark, so I've occasionally been looking up in the sky to check where they are just to make sure I know my way back home. But it's nice and easy, we should be able to get back here before night falls, because we didn't bring a bed with us, so we couldn't exactly sleep while we were out there in the swamp. Let's hop down here, add the sugar cane to the farm, and then get a good night's rest. Good morning, and we've got a visitor out the back of our little house, which was preventing me from getting some sleep during the night until he moved a little bit. We're going to try and dispatch him here with a couple of swift blows of the axe. Fantastic stuff. Apparently this squid tried to die in sympathy, I guess. And the, uh, we have ourselves a fully grown patch of netherwort out here, which I think we may as well harvest while we're out the back here. Now, netherwort, when it's fully grown, it looks like this. It's kind of, there are three stages of growth. When it's small, when it's kind of medium size, like those two are, and when it's large, like that. And as we break it here, you'll see we get loads of netherwort back. We got eight just from those stalks there and we'll get a few more from these and that. There we go, we've got 16 now, so all we need to do is replant those and we come away with 12 netherwort, just like the crops that we're growing in the field over there. It means we can have as much netherwort as we want as long as we keep growing it out the back there. Now back to our little sugarcane farm out here, you can see that there are no blocks in this little patch here which are not taken up by either sugarcane or a water source block that's necessary to place sugarcane next to. So we're doing pretty well over here and we have 15 sugarcane left over, plus we're getting a little bit from these stalks over here which are still growing which is good. We're going to keep this farm here for a little while just for aesthetic purposes because it looks nice around the lake here. But with these 17 or maybe a couple more sugarcane we're going to start an automatic farm design to farm sugarcane while we run around doing other things and farm it automatically for us and then you guys can decide which one you would prefer to have in your own world and build whichever one you like. And this means our first redstone project folks. So here we go. We're going to grab all of the redstone dust that we have in here. We might not use it all but it's going to be important to grab a bunch of it. We're also going to grab maybe 16 iron ingots so it's important to have a large amount of iron for this. So make sure that you've gone mining, you've got yourself a bit of iron and that you're not going to use that for extra tools or anything like that. If you've got a few diamonds in supply then you should be okay for tools and stuff like that. We're going to grab a whole bunch of wood, basically as much wood as we've got right now, and we're also going to grab as much cobblestone as we can carry. In this case, uh, we don't quite have a full stack, we might need to get a little bit more, but that should be fine. So. What we're going to do now is open up the recipe book, go to the redstone components section, and for a start we're going to make a couple of observers. So we will need a few of these. In fact, I think we will only need two of those, so let's just make two and then let's collect the rest of the recipe ingredients and put them back in here. Now we need to make pistons, and for some reason the piston recipe isn't showing up, but I think that's because we need to break the wood down into planks, like so. There we go, pistons. Let's see how many of those we can make. Twelve is a good number. I think that will probably do. Ideally, we would need 16 for the farm design I have in mind, but we're going to grab 12 pistons to start off with, and I think that will work all right. In fact, we might actually grab one more iron from here and make another redstone component by making a chest here, like so, and by making a hopper out of it with the five iron ingots around a chest here. Now, the piston recipe is one redstone, one iron, four cobblestone and three wooden planks across the top. So you will need a lot of materials to make a lot of pistons and it's important that you grab a bunch of that and you don't just run out halfway through. <laughs> so let's uh, let's take these out here and we're going to work on a little automatic farm design kind of opposite the entrance to our house. I think we'll place it over here. So let's clear out a nice little area for this out here. So let's talk about what we've just made. Pistons are blocks which can push other blocks in Minecraft when they have a redstone signal applied to them when they are switched on or off. In fact, I have enough cobblestone left over that I can make a lever and demonstrate this. So if I place the lever next to this piston and turn it on, the piston head pushes out and it will push something one block over. So if I place a piece of dirt in front of this, it will push it like that and it will stay there. The, the, the piston doesn't hold on to it right now. You can make a sticky piston that does do that, but we're not going to worry about those. The observer block 
is a really interesting one because this will put out a redstone signal if the block in front of it changes somehow. So I'm gonna put a little bit of redstone dust over here to give you a quick example. And if I place a dirt block in front of that, see how that flashes for a second there? That means it's powering the redstone dust behind it for a fraction of a second. In fact, that is calculated as one redstone tick. The redstone tick thing is not something you need to memorize unless you're working very heavily with redstone, but it's kind of useful later on. And what happens with this is if you have, say, a piston attached to the end of this redstone wire like so, and then you place a dirt block in front of it like that, the piston will temporarily, very, very quickly push out and then retract again. What this means is if you have sugarcane growing in front of this, it will actually break the sugarcane. So let me just quickly dig down here. Oh, we've got some stone underneath there. Place a water source in there and then place some sugarcane in front of it. Now, if I take this dirt block away, once again, updating the block in front of the observer, see the sugarcane gets pushed, it gets turned into the item form of sugarcane, the same way it does when we break it manually over there, and then that can get pushed into a water stream that can flow down into something that can collect it, like a hopper attached to a chest. So what we're going to do here is collect a bunch of these pistons in a row and grow sugarcane along the front of them, have an observer detect when the sugarcane grows up towards it, and that way we can have the pistons push out as soon as the sugarcane grows to a certain height, and it will harvest all of the sugarcane for you, pushing it into a water stream and allowing it to gather in a collection chest. So we're going to build that over here. We're going to need a few building supplies for that. So let's uh, let's actually go and get some different building supplies. I feel like we need to start building with different types of wood than just oak and the occasional bit of birch. Let's go and find some spruce wood. Spruce wood can typically be found in cold and mountainous regions of the world. So you're looking at cold tiger biomes or up here in the mountains. Let's see if we can hop up here and grab some of the spruce that I can see growing on the top there. This might involve a little bit of pillaring every now and again because it's sometimes difficult to traverse these big mountains. But there we go, a tall mountain spruce ready to be chopped down by our lumberjacking axe. Let's do this. And of course, as with the other tree types, the spruce trees will drop saplings that allow you to regrow them back at home. So we're going to see if we can gra grab as many spruce saplings as we can before the sun once again goes down. There we go. We've got a couple now. We've got one here. We'll hopefully get a couple more out of this tree. Actually, it looks like one might be all we're going to get. Well, fair enough. One will be all we need. <laughs> Let's make our way home. And now with a single spruce sapling and a little bit of bone meal, we should be able to grow ourselves another spruce tree which will hopefully give us even more saplings and then we can start a wonderful spruce farm here and of course we didn't get any saplings from that whatsoever so I'd better go back up there if I want to get some more see that time I only took down two trees I got nine saplings back so the moral of the story is Minecraft doesn't always play fair so having gathered a little bit more spruce wood and broken it down into planks we're going to place them over here like so we're going to make a row here of one two three four five six and then we're going to leave a block and make another row of one two three four five six and it's here that we're going to place the pistons on top of those facing outwards like this going one two three four five six and then on the other side the same now we're going to cut a trench down here. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six blocks along like that. We're going to place a bucket of water at this end so it flows along this way and we can even divert it that way into this middle block here. And right here is where we're going to collect the items from both sides. So on this side, we'll dig a similar trench, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then curve it around that way. And on that block there, we can put our hopper. We'll have a space here for our collection chest and we'll just be able to grab sugarcane out of that whenever the farm has harvested it. Looks like that's all flowing down into that spot. Fantastic stuff. Now the next trick is to build a little platform between these pistons like so. We're going to build that along there and that will serve as the place where we're going to put down our redstone wire and it will also give a platform from which to place these observers. Now we're only going to put one observer on each side of these so it's only going to detect when a certain set of sugarcane stalks has reached the three block height, the maximum height like sugarcane can have and that is going to be fairly random so the farm isn't going to fire all the time but it does mean we get to conserve the little quartz and redstone that we have in some farm designs you will see entire rows of observers along here so that the pistons will fire whenever any of the sugarcane has grown to three height rather than just one specific one but we're going to place it facing
facing that way so that the red dot is on this side and the face that detects the sugarcane growing is on this side. We're going to do the same on the opposite side but for a, an arbitrary, a completely random chosen piston and then we're going to place redstone dust all the way along the edge here. And what this is going to do is anytime a sugarcane grows here, I can use this as an example, you'll find sugarcane growing up to three high all around this and it's not going to make much of a difference if it grows there. But then on the other hand, if it grows next to that one here, like so, all of the pistons will fire and they will fire on both sides because this line of redstone dust actually connects the two of them and that will power every single piston at once and they'll get pushed off. Now as you can see this isn't a completely loss free system. Some of the sugarcane has ended up down here and that's fantastic but some of it has landed on the grass there and some of it has landed on the other side. We can't do very much about it landing over here because this right here is going to be uh Wait a minute, this isn't a great design because there's nothing we can do about placing a sugar cane there. All right, I'll take that off. <laughs> we don't need those two pistons on the side then. Maybe, maybe we could have one on the end here or something. I don't know. We could, we could maybe grow one there and then have that come off into the water stream as well. That might work okay. So we can we can have the, the redstone dust go around the corner here to another piston facing that way. This is gonna be a bit of a strange design in, in general, but I think it should work. I think it should be all right. So we'll do the same on this side as well, and then this side will grow, and, and all the pistons will fire whenever it grows up as far as that one. So what we can do about the pistons pushing sugarcane onto the opposite side here is build a wall maybe out of glass maybe out of spruce or something like that so that we can uh, we can shield this side over here and so that anytime any of the pistons fire they're pushing them into the wall and they'll drop straight into the water and still get collected over here by the hopper so we're only really going to lose the ones that are placed on the grass here there we go we've cooked up a little bit of glass and i'm going to pop that down there like so and now whenever the sugarcane breaks it should go straight into this wall of glass here and it gives us a nice place to look in at the sugarcane. So that's all going to drop into the water streams, be carried down to the end here where we're going to have it collected in a hopper and that's given me a great excuse to explain to you guys how hoppers work. Hoppers are a fantastic little collection device in Minecraft and where they collect stuff and where they what they output into depends entirely on which way you place them. So if you place it facing a block that's below it like so the hopper pipe will be facing downwards and anything that goes into the hopper from the top will end up collected in any chest or any, any kind of collection mechanism that you have down here. So it can be anything that's got an inventory basically, except from a player. It can be a chest, it can be a dropper, a dispenser, even another hopper, anything like that. So if I pop a couple of pieces of glass in here now, you'll notice they start to disappear and they all end up in this chest. Hoppers can also be placed on the side of chests like so and you'll notice that where I've placed it now means that the uh, the chicken has come to check out our little sugarcane farm. It means that the pipe faces into the chest and now anything that comes into the top of the hopper will be directed into the chest from the side like so. So what we're going to do is dig out a little trench here for our double chest to go in. It's going to be popped in there like so. We'll take a look at the side there so we can make it a double chest. We'll take out this dirt block here and we'll very carefully place the hopper onto the side of the chest like so. That should now be directed into the chest. Let's quickly chest that, uh, let's quickly test that it works. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so that's now going to cut off any of the sugarcane that grows up to three blocks tall in front of these observers. The observers will fire the pistons. The pistons will push the sugarcane into this water stream. The water stream will collect it in the hopper and it'll go into the chest. Fantastic stuff. And we even have a nice little build here that we can do something fun with. We can turn this into a greenhouse maybe or something like that. But either way, it's a fairly economical sugarcane auto farm design. All you need is a bunch of pistons, a little bit of redstone wire, and a couple of observers, and you should be just right. But look at this. Look at how much sugarcane we have from our manual farm already. In the time that it's taken us to set up the automatic farm, which, let's be real, is going to be very convenient to have. It's going to be absolutely perfect to have a, an auto farm, but in the meantime, whilst we've been doing all of that stuff, the manual farm has given us over a stack of sugarcane, not to mention the stuff that's grown over here. So I'm not saying the manual farm is better because it does mean you have to come over and punch the sugarcane anytime you want it, whereas the automatic farm 
automatically punches it forever. <laughs> so you never need to worry about it. All you need to do is come over here and check this chest to see if any has amassed in there. But you know what? I think we might even have enough sugarcane now that we can make a bunch of paper and we can make a bunch of books with that. And we should hopefully be able to make enough for our enchanting table bookshelves. So let's go and see how much leather we have. And that will tell us how many cows we need to kill to get some more books. There we go. We have enough leather for five books like so and we'll need a lot of wood for this as well because uh, bookshelves do require that you have six planks of any kind of wood and three books across the middle so we'll make one of those <laughs> and this is going to take quite a while it looks like because only one bookshelf there so far isn't going to do very much so let's go and see how many cows that we can take out we'll breed them up first with the wheat and then we'll kill a few more to get a little bit of leather and we'll see how much we end up with. So from that little session, we got ourselves a bunch more leather, but you are going to need 45 books in total in order to make 15 bookshelves because 15 times three is 45. So we're going to need a few more cows to be bred up before we can complete our collection of bookshelves over here. But I'm going to do that off camera. I think we have spent enough time doing stuff in today's episode. Let's at least get some of these bookshelves on the go first. We can make seven more right now, which is not too bad, I think. We should be able to at least see the effect it has on the enchanting table. And once again, remember, you need to place these a block away from the enchanting table. Placing one on this block here or any of the blocks immediately adjacent or diagonal from the enchanting table will not work. But you can place them in this corner over here. So it is possible to put them up that way. But we'll pop those around there like so and let's take a look at the effect this has had on the enchantment table already you can see better enchantments are popping up and enchantments of up to level 20 are available maybe even more depending on what items we enchant but right now level 20 seems to be the norm okay so hopefully we should do, be able to do a little bit more work off camera and we can get ourselves a bunch more books but that is going to do it as the rain falls outside and darkness falls that's going to be it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide thank you so much for watching and i hope you learned a lot about sugarcane farms today leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon bye for now